Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a lot of interesting topics to go over. As you can see, we are starting with Big Ramy. Now, you guys know that Big Ramy is soon gonna step on stage at Pittsburgh Pro. He's gonna do a guest posing. Yeah, just a guest posing, but really it's also kind of a competition because we're gonna see who looks like what and he's going against the very best in the world. I mean, against, under quotes, but still, everybody, including the judges, will kind of have an idea of what Big Ramy is gonna look like on stage which stage? Well, of course, Mr. Olympia stage, he doesn't need to do any other shows because he's qualified for life, there is no Arnold Classic, it's over, so he must be preparing to come back to the Mr. Olympia stage. Now, all the other guys that are doing the Pittsburgh Pro guest posing are invited by Jim Mannion, and they have to show up. Nick Walker is gonna show up one week out of New York Pro. If it was any other show inviting him to guest pose one week out, of course he would not accept it, but this is Jim Mannion, so he kinda has to. And Big Remy, we didn't even know if he's retired or what, and since he's doing this guest posing, it must be on his initiative. It's not like he was invited by those guys and like he has to show up, because he could be retired, he could be like 200 pounds right now. No, 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 this has to be his initiative, because he wants to make a statement to the world. He wants to tell us how good he looks and that he's coming back. Now we come to the interesting part. It turns out Chad Nichols is no longer coaching him. And Chad Nichols, I don't even know if he's coaching anybody else today, really, as far as top pro bodybuilders. I mean, he prepped the William Bonac, but he failed with him. And with Big Ramy, he failed big time. So maybe Chad Nichols is retired. Maybe he's not as sharp as he was back in the day in the 90s with all those guys and uh, at the beginning of the 2020s. So Big Remy is not gonna prep alone, he is gonna find a coach. And which coach is it? Well, it seems like it's Patrick Tour. I know Patrick said in that video that he doesn't want every YouTuber to make a video about this, but I'm sorry, it's my job, I have to do it. Patrick Tour seems to be coaching Big Remy. He didn't officially confirm it yet, but he didn't deny it either. Let me show you. I have a feeling that Patrick is working with him. I'm just saying this out loud. No, I'm, I, I, I'm not saying that, okay? I'm not, I know you're not saying it, but you I was, You don't have to say it. You don't... No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no. Listen, I'm just, I just have a feeling, but it doesn't matter. Because there's several guys that he hasn't worked with in the past that is, you know, it's worth to give it a try. Patrick, uh, yeah. I, I hope you're working with him and that he's coming back with a vengeance. Yeah, he's still... Let's, let's let's not put any rumors out there. I don't want to be on every every yeah. YouTube outlet there. No, it's I'm not confirming any of it. Not confirming I, means I, not confirming is not denying. So oops. you were quick no, you no, were no. quick to deny Samson. <laughs> no. no, you asked me no, if let, I let's not say no more. We don't even talk yeah, about yeah, it. Don't, don't worry about it. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear, I think it's pretty obvious. Actually, at the beginning of this podcast, they asked him, is he coaching Samson? Are there any talks about that? And he was quickly like, no, 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 there is nothing, there is nothing. And as far as Big Ramy, he was like, I am not confirming that. He did not deny it, though. So, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's not official yet, it's not public, but yeah, it's pretty clear. I don't think we need to talk about whether this is true or not, we need to talk about how Big Remy is gonna look like now working with Patrick Tour and Big Remy during his career he was coached by many different coaches and he brought very much different looks with each one of them I think he brought the best with Chad Nichols but lately it hasn't been working out now is that a problem with Chad Nichols or is it really Big Remy's body that's not really responding anymore? Or is it a combination of those two things? We don't really know, but I don't think it has much to do with a coach. Because at the Arnold Classic 2023, Big Remy was probably at his all-time biggest and leanest. I don't think his glutes were ever this peeled. Overall, I don't think he was ever this sharp, this hard, this shredded and this massive at the same time. I think this was his absolute best peak of all time, combination of size, fullness and conditioning, and the real reason why he didn't place higher was the injuries, or whatever is happening to his physique, or the fact that he skipped the Pittsburgh Pro guest posing in 2022. But if it is that, he's gonna fix that by guest posing this year, and as far as his physique, 
Can Patrick Tour fix the issues? No, no, he can't do that, but maybe the stem cell treatment and a little bit of rest from competing and prepping is gonna do him good and he's gonna come back a little bit more fresh. Can he freshen up so much to be able to win the Mr. Olympia again? No, 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 I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen. I mean, he is crazy massive, he can get in good condition and, you know, he is a freak, Big Ramy is a freak, even like this, he's still phenomenal, but like to win the Mr. Olympia again, I just don't see that happening with any coach. I think Patrick Tour is gonna do very well with Big Ramy, I think he's gonna pick him as good as possible, but the best case scenario at a Mr. Olympia for Big Ramy is like a top 5 finish. I just can't see him beating Samson, Hardy, Derek or Nick Walker again. It's gonna be really extremely difficult to beat Andrew Jacked or Hunter Labrada. But if he's actually improved, he could battle with those guys and like try to crack the top 5. Let's see how much can he really freshen up. But picking Patrick Tour as his new coach... I think that's a great idea because first of all Patrick had had so much success lately with so many great bodybuilders, with big guys as well, and also based on what Dennis James is saying, who knows Big Remy very well, the problem with Big Remy is staying focused and Patrick Tour is like the most hardcore coach out there, if anybody is gonna discipline Big Remy, it's gonna be Patrick Tour and if that's what Big Remy needs then maybe he's gonna bring out the best possible outcome from Big Ramy, he's not gonna be as fresh as he was when he was younger, but if Patrick can bring him nice and sharp and full, Big Ramy is somebody you should never underestimate. Alright, the next show I wanted to talk about is the, well, unfortunately, let's say, the most disappointing show of the year, Detroit Pro. Now, this show is promoted by Fuad Abiyad, and I'm sure you guys follow Fuad's podcast. And on that podcast, so many great bodybuilders were announced that might do the show. Some of them jokingly, some of them seriously, some of them really considered it, and they decided not to do it. And only six guys are doing the show, and only three of those guys are known. Martin Fitzwater, Vitaly... Uglinico or Woodvito and Justin Rodriguez. The other three guys, I don't know who they are. And yeah, only six guys in this show. And this show actually offers a great prize money. And that's what Food actually tried with this show. He wanted to give more money to open bodybuilders because he hoped more bodybuilders, open bodybuilders, will show up at the show. And he doesn't have many categories here. He limited this show to only a couple of categories and he wanted to give most money to open guys and only these three guys answered. None of them are even Olympians. Yeah, Justin Rodriguez is, but back in the day, I don't see him qualifying this year. There are three guys who were supposed to do the show but decided not to do it and I am really, really surprised by their decisions. For example, James Hollings said, it's crazy that James was actually doing a practice peak week protocol right this week and he actually kept dieting after the Arnold UK basically he looks the most conditioned he ever looked he's not qualified for the Mr. Olympia and I think he's Fuad's friend James was introduced to Fuad on the podcast by Luke Sando all the way back in the day and he kept he was a part of the podcast for a long long time he still shows up from time to time and I feel like he and Fuad are personal friends close friends and this guy still decided to skip this show. He decided to do a peak week at home without competing. He didn't want to do for this favor. And also at the same time win $25,000. No, no. For some reason, James decided not to do it. Even though he said he might do it. He did a peak week at home just to take photos. And he got shredded, way more shredded than the Ohio Arnold and the UK Arnold. And he still decided not to do the Detroit Pro, which would be basically an easy win for him looking like this, an easy $25,000, and a huge favor to a friend, but for some reason he decided to not do it, I don't get it, but if I was Ford, I would be mad as hell at James, if he didn't have like a really good excuse, which I don't think he has. Then there is also Akeem Williams, who is also not qualified for the Mr. Olympia, 
He beat everybody at the Auto Classic aside from Hari Chopin and Samson Dauda who are not gonna do the Detroit Pro. So it would be an easy win for him as well. Easy $25,000, easy Mr. Olympia qualification. However, for some reason, some really strange, weird reason, he decided not to do it. What the hell is this? What does this mean? I am aware that Fua did burn a lot of bridges with a lot of bodybuilders, a lot of guys who were sponsored by his company and who were on the podcast and then they weren't, so yeah, I'm sure Fua made some enemies, but is it really this bad that nobody wants to do the show? Even though there is $25,000 for the first place winner, also they made sure that the background at this show is gonna be just a plain black curtain and the lighting is gonna be great. That's what they're trying to do at this show, they promised that, they promised more money to the open guys, and for some very weird reason, nobody wants to do it. John De La Rosa also, if Akim is not doing it, if James, even if James is doing it, John could also qualify for the Mr. Olympia, but him and Patrick Tour, actually Patrick explained why they decided not to do the Detroit Pro, even though John was thinking about it, uh, Patrick basically said no, because it's the best thing for John's physique. He doesn't really care about how much money John can win or how can he qualify for the Mr. Olympia. He's only coaching him to achieve the best possible physique. Even if he doesn't make any money in his career, even if he doesn't qualify for the Mr. Olympia, it's all about looking as good as possible. So he thinks it's the best to take some time off now and do the Tampa later. And if he's top 10 Mr. Olympia material, he will win Tampa Pro. So yeah, I kind of get that, but still, man, it was so close. And I'm also struggling to see Patrick's logic because I think John would make more progress if he stayed in shape for two extra weeks, did a Detroit Pro, won that show, and then had all the time until Mr. Olympia to get in shape and to progress in the meantime. This way, he's gonna have to get shredded for the Tampa and then for the Mr. Olympia, so twice. And the Detroit Pro was only two weeks after Arnold UK when he was already in shape. So, yeah, is this really the reason? Or do they have any kind of issue with Fuad? I don't know, guys. But look at this lineup. This is ridiculous. This is funny. Only six guys, and none of them are probably gonna be top 10 at the Mr. Olympia, or I don't even know if they would qualify if there wasn't for this show. So, yeah, very, very disappointing show. I mean, so much money on stake, and uh, they promised a great background and lighting, and... You know, I'm sure the production value is gonna be awesome and, you know, everything is just tailored for the open guys. However, they decided not to do it. All of them, most of them, even personal friends of Fuad. So, I'm really disappointed, I'm really feeling sorry for Fuad and, yeah, it's a shame. I was also expecting an awesome lineup, but apparently we got a very disappointing one. Unless some of the guys decide to jump in last minute, maybe James is keeping it a secret. I don't think so, but, you know, maybe it's a possibility, I don't know. Now, as far as the guys who are doing it, I think Martin Fitzwater is potentially the favorite to win this show. Either him or Good Vito. I think they're kind of close, really. They're both similar height. If they were both at their 100%, and let's say 100% of Martin is uh, Texas Pro uh, 2022, and uh, let's say Good Vito is... Uh, the last show we saw, Arnold Classic uh, South America, then I would go with Martin, but I don't know what he's gonna bring, this is what he looks like right now, and here's also what he looked like about two weeks ago, 20 days out of this show, and yeah, it seems like he's bringing it, and he actually made progress, I think he looks thicker, bigger, he's coached by Stefan Kynes, so yeah, I believe he's gonna pick just right, conditioning here looked amazing at 20 days out, he, right now, is my favorite to win this show, and yeah, I feel like he needs to go to the Mr. Olympia stage. I think he should have been at the Arnold Classic stage, they didn't pick him, unfortunately, but I think he's very, very good. Uh, we'll see what he's gonna bring, but if this was 20 days out, I think he's gonna look amazing at a show day. And as far as Justin Rodriguez, it really seemed like he kind of improved his midsection. I mean, how much could have he improved it from the Arnold Classic Ohio? It's only been like four weeks. I mean, he has a new coach, yeah, so maybe something can be changed. He has more details in the abs, but overall, yeah, I don't see him placing above those two guys. I think he's gonna place third. So, once again, very, very extremely disappointing, and it draws a lot of questions. Why? 
Why did everybody decide to skip this show? Is there a personal reason? Some issues with food or something else? Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Lastly, we got a physique update from Samson Dauda. It's a back update. It hasn't been very long since the Arnold Classic Ohio, so I don't think his physique could have changed very much. But you guys know how fast can Samson change. And his Arnold Classic edition was so much improved in the back area from the Mr. Olympia 2023. Which means he made progress extremely fast. And even in this video, I feel like his lats are hanging lower. I think his back is growing right now. And it's almost, it's almost possible to notice. But one thing is for sure, this back right now looks better than it looked last year, that's for sure. And I think at a Mr. Olympia this year, it's gonna look improved compared to the Arnold Classic Ohio. Now, who's gonna be his next coach? That's the big question. We have no idea right now. Patrick Tour denied that there was any conversation between these two guys. So it's probably gonna be somebody else. And we'll see what Samson can do now without Milo Sharchev. It's gonna be very interesting to see that. I think he's gonna make progress, muscularity-wise. But as far as conditioning, that's a big question mark. But I guess we'll find out soon enough. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to this channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.